Hello everyone, welcome back to Reload Revelation, the show where we break down some gear, talk about the news, and overall, have a good day. I'm your host, Ryan Solson. Thank you so much for tuning in again. If you like this content, do me a favor. Ring that bell for notifications, subscribe. Now let's get into it. So for the first story I got for you today is kind of a big one. Well, honestly, biggest one I've seen so far <laughs> is that there is a challenge to the bump stock ban that the Supreme Court is currently looking at. Now, there's not a lot going out there right now besides a lot of people that don't know how a bump stock works, and that's okay. So what a bump stock is, is either a device or a method to use the inertia of the weapon to create simulated automatic fire. I say simulated because the bump stock does not change a semi-automatic to an automatic weapon. Basically, bump your f trigger finger in the trigger to create multiple rounds. However, it's still one trigger pull per round, but it's got this stigma behind it because of the Las Vegas mass shooting that happened when this guy was using it. Do I think they should be banned in my opinion? No. If you're a law-abiding citizen, you should buy whatever you want. I mean, it's your, it's your hard-earned money. But the thing that they tend to misinterpret or get wrong, just because this said product is not available to the common folk right now, doesn't mean you still can't create a bump stock. The reason being is that anyone can create a bump fire weapon if used in a certain way. People have used their belt loops. They have used just how they're holding the weapon. There's many, many ways to create a bump fire weapon. It's just in this case, the guy made it easier. However, it did not change any of the internals to make it fully automatic. There's no third hole. If it's a AR-15, there's no Glock slide stopper to make it fully automatic. There's nothing like that. It was just the use of inertia. So it'd be kind of interesting to see if the Supreme Court will actually overrule this, will they keep it? Uh, right now, I'm pretty confident that they'll keep it just from their past patterns of recent events. If they repeal it and bump stocks come back into circulation again, you really have to buy it to use it. I mean, it's not that big of a deal for me. So for the second story though, it's a rather interesting one. Turns out Iowa's House Republicans passes a bill that could permit teachers to carry on school grounds. This is the House Bill 2586 that would give them the official go ahead to carry on school grounds, but they wanna make sure that they're carrying responsibly. They said, hey, you gotta pass these classes and hold a permit to carry on school grounds and then you can carry. Now this is still being talked about, this just got passed the House. It's still got to pass by the Senate before it comes into law in Iowa. But it's it's a great first step. Some of the things that they were kind of wondering is, well, what's the what's the uh, liability chances of this? And he, here's my opinion on this. Okay, if you pass the class, if you are a responsible gun owner right now and you just are a teacher and want to carry, and you already have your permit, that's your liability. The most law-abiding citizens that we have in America are concealed carry holders. They know the law, they know what to do and what not to do, they know how firearms work, they know the risks that they're taking when carrying a firearm. Now is this open carry or is this concealed carry? Because that's another good kind of topic to go into. Uh, if teachers were open carrying, would that be a visual deterrent from doing something really, really dumb. Yeah, but you're also dealing with kids and I could see how some people would be a little bit wary about that given the climate of teachers today, uh, but that's why they would pass the training course. I mean, I think it's a great compromise. Training is always a good idea. Hopefully they pay for it. They don't have to pay for it out of their own pocket, uh, but I say go for it. If that deters just at least one person, then it's a win. Some of these teachers in the past shootings could have maybe stopped the guy with the gun. I'm not gonna go into hypotheticals per se, but you just never know. And it's gonna sound cheesy, but to quote Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. That rings true to this day. You have a great responsibility when you take up arms. 
when you exercise your second amendment right, that's a responsibility on you. And that's your liability. Because if you don't use it correctly, well, you're going to jail or prison or worse. Hopefully these teachers know that. And if they do, great. If not, well then they can opt out of it. Or I say, get trained up anyway. If you don't like guns, that's okay. You don't have to like guns. But training may open your eyes. The best way to make a anti-gunner or a person that's kind of wary about guns is to take them to a proper place, get a little bit of training, shoot. Maybe they change their mind, maybe they don't. I think it's a great win for Iowa's House Representatives to push this through, and I hope that it really does go through and make it into law, and maybe the rest of the country may see this, follow like, hey, this worked for them, let's see if it works for us. So for the segment I have for you today for the breakdowns is kind of interesting, right? A lot of people now, especially in Michigan, where I'm from, uh, are wondering about this whole Whitmer housing thing with these, she calls them migrants, they're illegal aliens. Let's just get it out there right now. They're illegal. They're not supposed to be here. But she's making people, she's begging people to voluntarily quarter them in their house. And what that causes is potential for home invasions to increase because we're letting these aliens in. Nine times out of ten, they're not good people. I'm not saying that they're not good people in the mix. But most of them we hear about are not good. And I want people to be apt to defend themselves with whatever they got. So let's kind of go through kind of the four main options that someone would have for home defense. And we'll kind of break it down, pros, cons of all those. So your first option is a handgun, right? Now handguns got a lot of good pros on it. Okay, it's maneuverable because if it's in your hand, you can go around your corners just like that. Uh, most modern handguns, most common ones, have a pretty decent capacity. Uh, this one, my Beretta in particular, does, I mean, it's like 10, 10 rounds. The, the kind of downside is that you really have to be trained up with your handgun before you can properly use this. Handguns are one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult gun to shoot and to get accurate hits on. I know the movies make it look like it's pretty easy, but you know, movies aren't everything and real life, you wanna make sure you're the most prepared. But if you are trained up with your handgun, it's a great option. And with ammo types, you don't have to worry so much about a thing called overpenetration. And it's exactly how it sounds. When you fire your gun and it goes through a wall, you wanna make sure it stops before it goes through another wall because with enough energy, it's gonna pass through your target that you're aiming at and hit a wall and you want it to stop. You just don't want it to go through any more than you already want it to. And that's where you get like hollow point rounds where they kind of bloom out when they hit their target, slowing down their energy, you know, just kind of taking it down from over penetration. If you mix the two together, good training, good home defense ammo, it's a great option and it's very concealable. You know, people really don't know you have to have it. You know, you can put it in your stash, wherever that may be, you know, as long as everyone knows where it's at in your family, I should say, in your family. Uh, it's a great option for you. Next up is a any sort of type of rifle. Now, there there's a lot of good pros with this. I mean, like, for example, an AR-15. It is the most common rifle in America to this day. I know a lot of people go between AR and AK. Either way, it's a rifle. It fires a, it fires a rifle cartridge. Uh, but what are some pros? I mean, it's very easy to shoot. Once you get it dialed in and zeroed, it's accurate. You don't have to worry about too much like recoil mitigation. It's it's very, very solid. Uh, magazine capacity, you get 30 rounds or even more if you want to go that nuts. Uh, but for a standard 30 round capacity magazine, 30 rounds is a good amount. And plus you can always have bigger magazines if they make them of course with the handgun too but you know, we're just we're just kind of taking these like stock like you just bought them you put them in your home and you're good to go uh, as far as training purposes obviously training is important but you don't need to be as 
well trained with a rifle than as a handgun. Now, a big concern with a rifle is overpenetration. Sends a lot of energy downrange, and it has a potential to pass through a whole bunch of walls in your home. You don't want that. However, there is an option to get frangible ammo. Now, what is frangible ammo? That means as soon as it hits either the wall or your target, wherever the home intruder is, it disintegrates almost immediately and it causes less penetration, but it still, you know, rocks their world. So if you mix it with that, it's good. However, there's one small problem with a rifle, especially if you live in a smaller home, and that is the sound. Handgun's gonna be loud, yeah. This is gonna be very loud, if not can cause permanent hearing damage to you, the person that's defending their home. I don't really care about the criminal inside my home, but if they, they, they will still get a loud ring too. So you kind of have to think about that. Well, if you put a suppressor on it, hey, good for you. But now it's going to get a little dicey with if you're in a situation where you have to shoot somebody with a suppressor, the, uh, you got to have all your paperwork. It's, it's a nightmare and I don't wish it on anybody but we gotta be prepared for these things. Magazines, for standard magazines, it is loud. So it's gonna ring people's bells, especially your family if they're sleeping and they don't hear this. Uh, but for maneuverability, this one for you know a standard 16 inch barrel, it's not the best, but if that's all you got, then that's what you have to deal with. Possible solution, if you just bought a stock rifle, get frangible ammo, take away that penetration power, that over penetration. That way you can be as safe as possible when, you know, it, if this happens, God forbid. Next up is probably my least favorite option for home defense, but if, you, if this is the only thing you got, well, then it is what it is. And that is any type of shotgun. It doesn't have to be a pump action, it could be semi-automatic. And the reason being, is that one is loud it's super loud you're gonna get your bell rung you're gonna be disoriented you know it, it's not like the movies you can't make it any quieter and it's gonna reverberate off your walls and it's gonna really really disorient you and everybody else that you're trying to protect and you don't get as much capacity with your magazine tube than a standard magazine or more even if you extend the tube out which i know there are tube extensions but again you only get maybe five maybe six when you buy something like this out of the box and also to kind of talk about the the thinking of oh we'll just if you have a pump that sound will scare them away i wouldn't rely on that completely if that works, great. But if it doesn't, well, one, you got a big problem on your hands because now if they're armed and they know you're armed, you're going to have a shootout in your hands. You don't want that. So there's that. I mean, maneuverability, it's about the same as a rifle for a st for a 18-inch barrel. However, it's big. It's bulky. It's not the best. And most ammo for shotguns is either going to be your double-op buck your slugs or your bird shot. Bird shot, less penetration, but most people are gonna have buckshot because, well, if they're like me, then they just like shooting it because apparently you just hate your shoulder. But it's a severe problem with over penetration and they do make specialty rounds, but they come with a price. So you may save money on the shotgun, but you spend it more on specialty ammo or even worse, drywall and last but certainly not least we have any style of pdw pccs whatever you want to call it uh this is a you know it's a nine millimeter so it's a standard pistol round but it's a little bit bigger format and you know this is a handgun still i'm kind of cheating but that's because uh the the, the you know who boys do not want me to have something against here 
So we kind of have to play around with this just like this. It's unfortunate, but again, hopefully the Supreme Court can hear that part as well. Uh, but you get your most bang for your buck when it comes to this. You don't need as much training with this as you would need for a handgun. It's much more manageable with two hands, a nice solid grip. You get the capacity from the rifle being standard 30 rounds for something like this. It's not going to be as loud as a rifle cartridge because it's a handgun cartridge. So you get less rounds. You can even back it off even more with subsonic, which with any one of these, but let's be honest, the 223, 556 five, round can't really go subsonic. The nine millimeter clearly can. We've seen it plenty of times. Shotguns, uh, good luck <laughs> is all I got to say with that. Good luck. But you get your most bang for your buck when it comes to this because it's easier to hold. It's maneuverable throughout your house. It's not gonna be as loud. It's still gonna ring your bell. I'm gonna tell you that right now. It's still gonna ring your bell. So just be prepared for that. But with the proper accessories in that, proper ammo, nine millimeter hollow points, they're, they're everywhere. You just gotta make sure you get the good ones. And then you have a very, very nice home defense weapon that won't really necessarily over penetrate if you make your shots correctly and overall it, it's a great option if i would have to pick one in the perfect world if i could fully customize anything and make it my home defense weapon i would go with something like this <clears throat> so with that serious subject out of the way we can get to some kind of fun stuff because i know being serious sometimes you got to do it but i like that fun being fun, being serious, you kind of have to go hand in hand. But today I have for you a helmet. Now, there are a lot of things that are pretty cool about this. I mean, this is like the stuff that you see in Vietnam movies, you know, Forrest Gump, We Were Soldiers, you name it. Any Vietnam movie, guaranteed is going to have this helmet, everything like this in there. But they don't show you exactly how this helmet works. And believe it or not, this helmet is actually two pieces. Technically three, but mainly two. You got your helmet lining, just like that. So that's the inside of the helmet. And you would fit it on the outer layer. This is the actual, like, helmet part. And basically, in Vietnam, you know, it, it's not too bad to wear. Not the most comfortable thing in the world. But it got the job done. It saved a lot of people's lives. And helmets mainly are for to prevent ricochets from hitting your head. It's not really designed for direct impact. It has saved people's lives from direct impact. And what's really cool is that with this helmet, there is also a liner. Which I don't want to take out that liner because it's all nice and pretty in there. But the liner is a Mitchell Camel pattern, which you don't really see at all anymore. Uh, it's a very... It's kind of a woodland style, if not almost the OG woodland before woodland came out. Around to keep the liner in place when you have everything in place too, just to give it a little extra snug. Uh, they would put, you know, grenade pins on there to disable traps. I mean, they would have bug spray there, tools if they ran a specialty job. I mean, this helmet would be filled with stuff. And mind you, if you ever run across Vietnam bug spray, don't use it. It's really, really gross, and it's super sticky. Uh, but this, it's got two straps. Normally, they wouldn't use them because it was just really weird to see a chin strap. They didn't like them. Uh, they would stick their spoon in these holes. I mean, you can see that there's a lot of slash marks in there for various needs. So that is our Vietnam-era helmets with the Mitchell Camel pattern. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again. I really appreciate it. If you like this content, do me a favor. Subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and as always, remember these five rules. Never point your firearm at anything you don't intend on shooting. Know what is behind your target at all times. Be aware of your surroundings. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And of course, have fun. I'm Ryan Sills for Reload Revelation. Thank you so much again for tuning in. I'm gonna go put on my helmet, and I want you to go catch him R&R. &R.